The explosion of plastic waste across the world threatens the very survival of life on our planet. Every year, up to 12 million metric tons of plastic enters our oceans. From poisoning marine life, to littering landscapes and clogging waterways, plastic waste in the environment is set to triple in the next decade. The problem is so vast it can seem overwhelming. But by reimagining this waste as a resource, we can begin to redress the balance. I'm Doni Kanyele in Cameroon, where a young entrepreneur is turning the tide on plastic waste by building boats out of bottles. And I'm Megan McCubbin in the UK, where one company is tackling a really sticky plastic problem, whilst making unique and sustainable products in the process. Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, the scale of the country's plastic problem is painfully clear. Plastic waste is clogging up the streets and rivers of Cameroon's major cities, polluting waterways, threatening marine ecosystems, and making life especially difficult for local fishermen. It's estimated that across the city of Douala, 1,300 tons of plastic waste is generated every day. So much of it is thrown into the city's rivers, you can't see any trace of water. Wow. I've never seen anything quite like this before. I don't even know how you begin to fix a problem this big. There's no doubt this is a major challenge for the city. But one local man has made it his mission to deal with it head on. His name is Ishmael Esume. Ishmael! Hi, nice. so good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ndedi. I mean, it's quite a place to meet, I must say. So is this normal here in Douala? Uh, you know, it's so sad. It's really sad. You have all the plastics that are thrown away by people in the street, in the household. And then you have the river, the water that collect all the waste that clog this bridge. And then you have people stopping with their car and throw their trash in the river. And you can see that plastic bag. People are not educated on how to manage their waste. So unfortunately, it's normal. It's overwhelming to see this, but you don't find it overwhelming. Why do you see this and think that this is something you want to take on for yourself? I realize that all the rivers are full of plastic. No one cares. No one says, what is this? Mm. And I was shocked to see that. So I decided to do something. And what I think that I could help to bring is changing people's mindset by showing the way. Ishmael began an initiative to clear up the waste from all of Douala's 10 choked rivers. He calls his company Madiba and Nature, meaning water and nature in the local Sawa language. He recruits a team of 30 volunteers, and today I'm giving them a helping hand. But it quickly becomes clear to me what a tough job this is. So we're standing on this board because as much as this looks like a bed of plastic, there's actually a river underneath it, so it's not very stable. It's very hot and very humid here. So when you have this amount of waste in water, of course, it calls mosquitoes and other kinds of waterborne diseases. And there are people who live all around here. So this is not just an environmental crisis, it's a possible health crisis as well, and a serious one. The work you're doing here is amazing, but there are so many bottles and it feels like this is just a dent. And it's really only individuals like you who are taking it on. There is no citywide plan or nationwide plan to tackle this enormous problem. No, there is no recycling system here in Cameroon. Our politicians have other problems, other priorities. So people are poor, no one cares about the environment. Yeah. This is the most urgent problem. So we need to change policy and to manage waste. Ishmael doesn't just see all this plastic as waste. He sees it as a valuable material and an opportunity to do good. He turns bottles into boats for the region's fishing community. And it all happens here inside his workshop. Ah, bottles. Yeah, this is, uh, this is our workshop place. I see. In my house here. 
So I'm here with some member of the team and we try to finish a boat. Ishmael's boats are built using traditional techniques. Who taught you how to do this? Uh, you know, I'm from a fishing community and my dad is a fisherman. Oh, wow. So when I was young, I was fishing with my dad. This technology had just adapted to the plastic bottles. So is that why this idea came to you? Yes, because the pollution affects the river. And now you cannot catch fish because the fishing area is full of plastics. So I thought to help not only to cleaning the rivers, but also to provide boats because it's not easy in the villages for someone to buy a simple boat. So now we build cheapest eco boat that could be useful. So we have part of our seat done. What's next? You want to press this? Yeah, I'd love to try. <laughs> Let's do that. So we tie this yeah, like a knot okay. here. Okay. It's not so bad, actually. You're learning fast. It is a little scary to think that what we're putting together, someone's actually going to be sitting on yep. out in the water. So I feel a little bit of responsibility okay. to not mess this up. I'm quite proud of my handiwork, actually. Yo, you, got, you did this it. This isn't so bad, yeah, eh? You did it. Once he's built the frame, Ishmael ties it to the base. And then he adds in the seats. Ishmael has built 37 boats to date. Given that it takes 650 bottles to build one, that's over 24,000 bottles removed from Douala's rivers and put to good use. So how much does it cost to make a boat like this with materials oh, and everything? nothing. It's simple. You just need bottles. The rest is your time. The boats take just a few hours to build. And they're so lightweight, they're easily transported to the ocean. It's a three-hour drive to nearby Kribi, where Ishmael gifts the boats to local fishermen. Traditionally made fishing boats can be extremely expensive. But even so, when Ishmael first started giving away his eco-boats, it was easier said than done. These look very different to all of the local fishing boats that we see. What was the reaction from the local community when you brought these here for the first time? <laughs> first, they thought it was a joke. I'm sure. It will never go in the water. And after when we went to the water, people used it and said, oh, it's working. And then they start to look to try to understand and try to see, can you go fishing with this one? The real proof, of course, is in the floating. Let's go test it out. Let's go test it. OK. You lead the way. Yep. It was a bumpy entry, but this feels so much better. It feels stable. I don't feel unsafe in any way. I feel really comfortable fishing in one of these. <laughs> what a great idea, and there's so many possibilities of what he can do in the future that can at the same time tackle the enormous issue of plastic waste in Cameroon. I mean, what an incredible young man. That's, that was really fun. Now we know the boat is seaworthy, we're delivering it to the latest happy customer who's going to test it out on a nearby lake. Hi, Mr. Camille. Oh, this is Camille, the fisherman. Camille. Good to meet you. Yes. What do you think of your new boat? How do you think having this new boat is going to change things for you? For me, for me. So it's better. It's ideal for me. I can say it's ideal. I can't say it's better. Why? Because it's less expensive. So maybe the accessibility and affordability of eco boats will be something that convinces people to give them a try. Yeah, effectivement, plusieurs pêcheurs tellement ça va beaucoup soulager beaucoup de pêcheurs qui n'ont pas de moyens du. D'abord, beaucoup vont pouvoir sauver, sauver, sauver une maison différente. Souvenirs au besoin de leur famille. Do you want to try it out? Let's see. Let's see how it works. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> How do you feel about Camille's reaction to his very own eco boat? I'm happy to see that I can make someone smile, someone get hope that maybe his condition will be better, maybe he could have more income to his family. Since he started in 2016, the growing success of his eco boats has inspired Ishmael to do more. It's his ambition to clear up Cameroon. And that begins with the country's first bottle recycling scheme. Wow. This is the eco bean. An eco bean is made out of 255 plastic bottles. And it will collect 1,000 plastic bottles. So this is a place where people can come and bring their yeah. plastic waste. This is the starting point of a strategy to really install a sorting system of plastic waste in Douala. So the idea of this eco bin, what you're trying to do here, where do you think it can grow to? We want our city to be like uh, the example in Africa. We aim to supply eco bin in the areas of Douala, the, all the corners in front of all the shop, the supermarket, the school. So it will be easy to come and pick up the waste and recycle them. So that is the vision where we want to go there. But how to reach there is not easy. Despite the challenges, Ishmael has even bigger plans for the future by producing bottle-made furniture and by educating the next generation. Fais quelque chose avec les bouteilles. Lutter contre la pollution. Parce que quand j'étais étudiant comme vous, quand j'étais élève comme vous, surtout quand j'étais étudiant, it's a legacy to take care of environment, to take care of our planet and uh, to clean our cities. It's an inspiration to me that even in this global sea of plastic, one person really can make a difference.